We need energy for pretty much every activity we ever do and for almost all body processes that our body accomplishes. We need energy to think, we need energy to regulate our body temperature, we need energy to digest our food, we need energy to transport substances around our body and across our cells, and of course we need energy for muscle contraction to take part in sport and exercise. So how do we get that energy? Where does it come from? This is what this video is going to focus on. Well, obviously we know we take in energy in our food in the form of carbohydrates, fats and proteins, but the body can't actually directly use that energy to fuel itself. There is essentially one source of directly usable energy in the body, and that is called adenosine triphosphate, ATP for short. Here is the biochemical structure of ATP. It's got this, um, this nitrogen-containing compound called adenine, and that is attached to a, um, a simple sugar, a monosaccharide, uh, called ribose. So that's, if you like, the kind of head of ATP. It's the way I think about it. Because attached to that is this sort of tail of uh, three phosphate groups, okay, phosphorus, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it's those, that tail that's the really important bit because attaching these three phosphate groups to each other are what we call high energy bonds, okay? Uh, they, they keep that tail together. And it's those bonds that contain the energy that the body needs to access. So if we can break down those bonds, we are able to then harness that energy to fuel whatever processes we need. Now, despite the importance of ATP for energy availability in the body, we actually store it in really, really small concentrations. One of the reasons is that um, ATP is very unstable around water, and because we are predominantly water, it's actually really difficult to store it in large concentrations. Uh, we've actually got enough ATP stored in our body at any one time to fuel around about two seconds of maximal exercise. So let's put that into context with the fastest human of all time. Okay, Bolt's about to start his 100 meters here. Race begins. That's it, he's out of energy. <laughs> so you can see how um, we have to be superb as human beings at replenishing ATP very, very quickly and continuously. And in future videos, we're gonna look at the energy systems that we have available to us that actually do that. But for now, let's focus on how the body actually accesses the energy that's stored in ATP. Well, it involves water and it's a process called hydrolysis. So here's, an, here's a water molecule. Let's focus on the oxygen atom in that molecule. It's got some electrons around it. And these electrons are actually gonna launch what's called a nucleophilic attack on the third phosphate group. It's a great name. But basically, it causes the electrons in the high energy bond to move into a lower energy state and move towards the oxygen atom here. And that causes that bond to break and that phosphate group will separate from ATP and form ADP, adenosine diphosphate. This part of the water molecule gets incorporated into the phosphate group, leaving behind this single hydrogen ion. And this is how ATP actually produces hydrogen. And there's another video on that, which I'm linking to here. So that high energy bond has been broken by this process of hydrolysis. And in the process of doing that, it releases free energy. And that is essentially how those, those high energy bonds are broken and the energy contained within them is released and harn then harnessed by the body for the, uh, for the work that it needs to do. So the equation is simply ATP plus water catalyzed by the enzyme called adenosine triphosphatase or ATPase, which then leads to adenosine diphosphate because one of those phosphates has been removed plus organic phosphate, a free phosphate plus energy. This is an exergonic reaction because it releases energy. So it's called an exergonic reaction. And actually ATP liberates seven and a half calories of energy per mole of ATP. Now, because we don't have a high store of ATP, even in a resting person, every ATP molecule is broken down and replenished approximately 1,000 to 1,500 times every day. That's the equivalent to turning over about 65 kilograms worth of ATP molecules. 
in a resting person over the course of a 24 hour period. It's a stunning amount. And it's an incredibly elegant and integrated and efficient system that we have to both break down ATP, liberate its energy, and also to rebuild it so that it can get broken down again. And that cycle just continues every single second of your life. So I hope you found that brief introduction to ATP hydrolysis useful. Uh, really the key take home messages are that ATP is the most important energy currency in the body, really the only meaningful source of directly usable energy that the body has. Um, it's stored in very small concentrations. It's broken down in a reaction called hydrolysis involving water molecules. When you break away the high energy bond between the second and third phosphate groups, you're left with adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates. You can also break the bond between the first and second phosphate, which would leave adenosine monophosphate. My camera nearly fell over. Adenosine monophosphate, which is, of course, one single phosphate. And the next step is to look at uh, how we rebuild ATP. Uh, the subsequent videos in this channel will focus on our energy systems and the exact steps that they go through to liberate the energy from our food, which is then used to rebuild those bonds in ATP. So I'll see you there for some discussion on that. Take care.